One of my viewers, Garris Vicarian, sent me this chart, which is a really interesting way of visualizing the kind of performance value that AMD is claiming roughly with their 9070 XT. Today's video is bigger than this. Uh, it's actually gonna be kind of inspired by this though, and we will talk about this chart as well, thinking more mathematically about different ways to represent the uh, generational performance uplifts that we're seeing here, what we've seen from NVIDIA's 50 series, why some of this is really concerning compared to what we used to see and is like the, the future of PC gaming looking a little bit bleak in terms of uh, upgrades, and maybe uh, the 9070 XT. How, how, how do we factor this in? So let's start here. So first of all, this chart was made uh, basically uh, using this kind of performance data. So AMD is claiming that the 9070 XT is roughly on par with the 5070 Ti. The reference model, 2% slower. AIB models, maybe 2% faster. They have another chart for that. Um, they're averaging across 30 games, saying that the native performance, and I think they're also including the ray tracing performance in this average, comes out 2% slower. So if you did throw out the ray tracing performance, you'd probably at least catch up, if not surpass, the 5070 Ti by a couple of percent. This is first-party data from AMD, though. So keep in mind, third-party independent reviews may reveal different performance, but this is what AMD is claiming. And again, they're claiming this price at about $600. So if you then look at Tech Power Up's relative performance chart and you kind of set a 5070Ti-ish performance as $600, you can then take these percentage differences for other cards and adjust their, uh, the $600 price point uh, to these percentage differences to show what if every graphics card offered the same performance per dollar that AMD is claiming in this chart. Now, it's also extremely important to note that any time you look at a raw performance per dollar metric, that you are now completely ignoring a vast number of factors besides the raw performance per dollar that goes into uh, which GPU is worth it for you and what you need. For example, VRAM gets completely ignored for, uh, unless it happened to uh, have come into play in some of the benchmarks that were being ran uh, for, the, for the particular data set that you, you gathered it from. But right, not every advantage of VRAM gets actually factored in there. Uh, another thing is uh, things like CUDA. What if you're doing workloads other than gaming uh, and CUDA is required for that? That's a big NVIDIA advantage. Um, and then just other little side note software differences, uh, all sorts of things. So the point is, charts like this absolutely are ignoring things, but that doesn't mean they're not interesting to look at. So I'm gonna flat back to the bash to the kind of uh, flack bash, fla flash back to the kind of white background here. So, uh, you know, flash bang warning. Okay. <laughs> anyway, so if we look at this chart, this is pretty interesting uh, because I think it might put other cards in a, in a sort of different light here. So uh, AMD is basically offering 5070Ti-ish performance if they can be believed for about 600 bucks. That means cards like the 4080, which perform about the same as the 5070Ti, uh, again, $600-ish. The 7900XTX, which if we're going off rasterized performance rather than ray tracing, which is what I think Tech Power Up's uh, relative performance chart is based off of. Uh, then we see the 7900XTX kind of roughly into that tier as well. The 5080 is not much faster than these. And more on that in a minute. Man, the 5080 does not seem like much of an uplift compared to we had what we had with the 4080, does it? Anyway, and then you can see the 4090 scaling up from there, and even the 5090, which is massively more performant than everything else here, uh, would be around a $1,000 graphics card. Now, what I saw when I first looked at this is, wow, that kind of feels more like what product stacks used to look like. Do you remember when the absolute ridiculous flagship cards were $1,000 or less, and the more um, attainable, almost that ridiculous flagship level was like $700 or less. <laughs> this feels more like that, guys, if you throw the 4090 into kind of the 50 series in between the 5080 and the 5090, uh, because it feels like there should be a product between those two. <laughs> uh, again, the charts like this are ignoring that, you know, the 5090 and 49 have a lot more VRAM than the 9070 XT, right? Like I said, and of course, NVIDIA has CUDA, feature set, whatever. And there's what the market's willing to bear, and right now, these things are selling out at the prices they're at. But this is kind of interesting to look at, right? Uh, if you kind of scroll down, 
down from here, you can see cards like the 4070 Ti Super would be around a $500 product. The 4070 Ti would, of course, then have to be a bit lower than that, Card, uh, which is, you know, in a similar ballpark to cards like a 3090. That would be $450-ish. Uh, 4070 Super coming in, you know, under 450. That means your 4070 would be probably close to $400 and it would scale down from there. But again, like I said, this feels more like how product stacks used to be. Now, I do think that it is getting more expensive to go to the newer process nodes and that is part of the issue here. I also don't know exactly what uh, AMD and Nvidia's margins are on these. Obviously they want to have a margin for profit. Also the margins uh, beyond the bill of materials need to cover research and development and, and marketing and all sorts of stuff. Um, so I get it. And a company, you know, a business doesn't want their margins to decrease unless forced to, to stay in business, right? Or, or, or to maintain market share. So I, I understand there's probably a lot of calculations going on behind the scenes uh, that made things happen the way they did, but man, that does kind of put things in a different sort of light. So anyway, thanks for Garris for sending this up. Uh, but it also inspired me to go a, a little bit further than this and talk a bit about how, man, that 5080 really does not feel like it gave us the generational jump <laughs> that we would have wanted. I talked about this a bit in my video and a lot of other reviewers did too, talking about how, wow, that was a really small generational uplift. Um, but I'm not sure everybody understands why that's so concerning if that's an indication of the kind of trend we can expect in the future. Because if this is just one bad generation, that's one thing. But if this is an indication of just how it's gonna be with process node advancement slowing down and getting more expensive, Oh, it could be a bit scary. So if you take that tech power up performance database and also they list um, the MSRPs and uh, cards launched at as well as their launch dates and things like that. I have tracked about a decade of the RTX for, uh, not RTX, but the uh, NVIDIA 80 class cards. And um, then we've got a graph to look at. Talk about some exponential modeling. So anyway, let's go ahead and talk about this data set though for a second. Cause again, that's kind of the theme of today's video. We're looking at uh, generational GPU math a bit and different ways of looking at it. So uh, if we go with the 980, uh, it's performance per, uh, uh, versus the previous generation according to the Tech Power Up uh, database was about a 38% performance uplift. The 1080 offered about a 51% performance uplift. The 2080, uh, a 39% performance uplift. The 3080 was a 63% performance uplift. 4080 was a 49% performance uplift. It just unfortunately came with a massive price increase. Uh, and then the 5080 came with a 12% according to Tech Power Up's database performance uplift versus the previous generation. Now, some reviews might have this closer to 15% or so, but we're just using tech power ups numbers to stay consistent. But yeah, that's kind of crazy low compared to what was normal. Uh, the number I down, have down here is if I took the da data set up before the, the 5080, so 980 to 4080, uh, 80 class cards, and if I do the geo mean of that, or actually even just the straight average comes out about the same in this case, we get that it's averaging about a 48% generational uplift until the 5080 offered 12%. Now, why is that concerning? Um, it's concerning for a variety of reasons. One thing is it's just a disappointing product, but it's even more concerning if that ends up being more of the trend from here on out, if that ends up being more of what we expect in the future. Because if we then make a, a model off of this, we can see just how long it would take to get certain, gener certain uh, performance increases. So for example, uh, doubling performance is what it would take you to go from 30 FPS in a certain situation to 60 FPS in a certain situation or from 60 FPS to 120. So you could say it's, it can take you from a ridiculously bad experience, uh, you know, maybe arguably playable if you really wanna play the game at 30 FPS, to a good experience at 60, that's doubling performance, right? Or from a good experience at 60 to a high refresh rate experience at 120. That's what doubling would be. But how long will it take to double if you're only increasing 12% per generation? That's an interesting question, right? So if we make an exponential model out of this, um, the two models here are one of them, the, the, the uh, kind of pinkish purple color here 
is what used to be normal for the 80 class. That's a 48% uh, improvement roughly every two years. Because if we track the release years, it's not exact, but it's roughly every two years. Although the 80 class, uh, the, the 50 series actually took a bit longer than normal to come out as well, which again, bit disappointing. So lower than normal uplift and took a little longer to get it. But if we still just say that we'll get a new GPU generation roughly every two years, we get um, uh, this kind of pink graph if things had continued as expected based on the previous decade or so. Uh, and then this uh, teal-ish color we have here is what do things look like if we're getting uh, only 12% every two years? And we're just setting one as like uh, a unit of measurement. Maybe this could have been the, uh, the 4080, and here's how things would have gone. And then uh, here's how things go according to the current trend. So two years after the 4080, what actually happened is we got a 12% increase. And what would have happened uh, would have been normally, uh, would normally have been uh, more like a 48% increase, right? That's, that, that's how we would read uh, these data points. Now, why that's interesting is if we then uh, put a flat line at two, or I guess I may, do I have to type in y equals two, guys? Okay. Two is, uh, again, the y-axis here is measuring performance compared to whatever your baseline is uh, in the starting year, right? So maybe we're setting this as 4080. So how long would it take to double 4080 performance? Well, according to the old model, we would have got there in about three and a half years, uh, which means that by the time, if you're getting a GPU generation roughly every two years, it means that you know if, if you had the 4080, that the 6080 is probably doubling and actually on pace to do more than double the performance of the 4080. Look at what happens if you instead continue off this 12% line where the 5080 actually only delivered 12%, how long then does it take us to double? Or what would we predict every generation? So if we get a generation every two years, then if this happens again, uh, our 6080 is only 25% faster than the 4080. And then two years after that, we've only reached a 40% increase, which is still less than we'd normally have gotten in a single generation. Uh, so what are, what are we at, the 7080 now? <laughs> uh, so yeah, because this was 5080, 6080, 7080. Okay, that means your 8080 is on track for a 57% uplift compared to the 4080. And that means that you're, uh, let's see, we're 10 years out now, and we still haven't doubled performance, guys. Um, <laughs> and then 12 years out, we've finally done it. That's kind of ridiculous. So if 12% became the normal 80 class generational uh, improvement, it would take like six generations of product if they release every two years to actually get uh, a doubling of performance, to take a 30 FPS experience to a 60 FPS experience, or to take a 60 FPS experience to 120 FPS experience. Now, this is just factoring in performance uplifts without price or anything like that. So obviously, once again, like the other mo uh, you know, graphs we looked at at the beginning, we ignore something in this type of calculation. But I think it's important to understand <laughs> kind of where we are at with that, right? Um, that's why that's so disappointing, because if that becomes a trend, that is um, not good. I don't know how else to put it other than that's extremely disappointing. Now, I understand that wafers are getting more expensive and it's getting harder to, to deliver generational uplifts and things like that, but um, I don't know, 12% still feels pretty dang low for that 5080. <laughs> anyway, all right, hopefully you guys found the, the uh, information here useful and or interesting. Um, I will also mention that I'm hoping that the increased competition in that $550 to $600 price range with AMD's 9070 and 9070 XT hopefully actually available in a lot of supply because again, these have apparently been shipping to retailers since like early January um, and, and keep getting in shipment. So hopefully they're actually able to hit their price points. Um, because again, that actually, right, right now AMD isn't putting out anything to compete with 
what NVIDIA is is doing, right? Uh, at least with the uh, you know, 5080, 5090, those kinds of things. Uh, they're not releasing a new direct competitor to that. So uh, at least like they're not really, sorry, I should put it, they're not releasing a card in those pricing tiers. So if somebody is buying in that pricing tier, there's not really anything putting pressure on there. But uh, in, in this $550 to $600 price range, it looks like there will be competition if AMD cards can actually hit those price points. So I'm hopeful that this will also keep NVIDIA's 5070 a little more honest at 550. I am looking, because uh, we're still a few days out from launch here as of the time of filming, at Newegg, and I am actually seeing a number of $550 MSRP products, but also a bunch of models listed as coming soon without details. So I'm hoping these aren't all like $700 or more, and the uh, the 550s have like one or two cards available, sell out, never get restocked, and then um, you just have models for hundreds of dollars more. I'm hoping that's not what we see. <laughs> we'll see what, what ends up happening. That's kind of how the uh, uh, 5070 Ti, 5080, and 5090 launches have felt like. But um, like I said, hopefully having actual competition uh, may actually keep it uh, a little bit more honest. Anyway, let me know, guys, how you are feeling about the generational uplifts we're getting, the value of the current uh, generation of, of, of GPUs and all of that, let me know in the comment section. I hope all of you have an excellent day.